This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. So we looked at how to examine and assess outside the organisation using PASTEL for the macro environmental effects and then zeroing in on an industry and using Porter's Five Forces. Now we begin to turn inside and look at internal appraisal. Uh, what is the company or the organisation capable of? And we have to think what uh, yields capability, what, what is going to give capability. And the first element that we can uh, look at is to say that capability depends on both resources and competences. For the time being, think of a resource as a non-current asset, a machine. So let's say I wanted the capability of building cars. I need a production line, that's the resources. But that would be useless if I didn't have the competences uh, to use those facilities in a productive way to design cars and to sell them. So you need resources and competences. We'll see at some point the, the uh, difference between resources and competences kind of merge a little bit when you have non-tangible uh, resources like know-how, like skills, then to some extent you're getting over towards the competence. But, but the, the, the difference is worth keeping. The first level of resources and competences you can get uh, give you what's called threshold capabilities. Threshold capabilities are enough just to allow the organization to kind of cling on with its fingertips. Uh, it just is able to compete, just is able to survive uh, year by year, but it's very much a hand-to-mouth existence. There's no great profits, no great security, and probably the life of such an organization is relatively short. It just takes a little bit of pressure from a competitor or a little bit of a setback, perhaps in the cash flows, and the organization is, is going to fail. What we're looking for uh, is strategic capability. And again, I will emphasize this word uh, here, strategic. Uh, it means essentially long-term capability. Uh, we don't just want to be good for one year. We want to be kind of good, very capable for really indefinitely. And what we require then are, first of all, your threshold capabilities, and then built on top of that, additional capabilities that give you competitive advantage. And competitive advantage is really what keeps you in front of your competitors. And if you're in front of your competitors, it should be meaning that you're making better profits than your competitors. You can reinvest those profits in producing new products. You can promote yourself very well. So this is where safety comes in once you have the capabilities that give you the edge, give you the competitive advantage. Now, what are the uh, uh, the, the, the parts of uh, uh, the, uh, the extra capabilities, the, the capabilities for competitive advantage? In other words, how are we going to do better in the long term than our competitors? And one way is if we are lucky enough to have a unique resource. An example of a unique resource could be a patent on a valuable pharmaceutical. For the 15 or 20 years that that patent lives uh, and you are the only person allowed to make that pharmaceutical and it's a real lifesaver, then you are going to just reel in those profits like nobody's business. Another type of unique resource might be if you own, for example, a diamond mine. So a company called De Beers uh, owns many of the diamond mines in Africa. Uh, if it owns nearly all the mines, there's very little opportunity for other people to uh, produce diamonds. And that allows De Beers to be a very profitable company year in, year out. However, I said unique resources if you are lucky, uh, because many companies uh, do not have unique resources. They are producing, if you like, ordinary kind of products on ordinary kind of machines. Uh, and basically, you can go down and buy many non-current assets, IT equipment, what have you. You can buy a lot of the resources without any restriction. They are actually not unique. In which case, uh, you might need to rely on core competences. 
ways in which you have learned as an organization to use your resources, which everybody shares, everyone's got the same resources, but you use your resources better than anybody else. An example might be Apple. Apple doesn't make its own hardware, it's all subcontracted, but of course Apple has a, an absolutely unique competence at designing remarkable products and inventing remarkable uh, pieces of software or, or, or concepts like iTunes. And the thing about core competences is it can be quite difficult for other people to actually identify and to copy what these core competences are. We would dearly love to know what makes Apple tick. How is it year after year after year it comes out with a string of innovative uh, discoveries or, or products? But it's very hard to determine what it is. You can't go and buy competence in the local competence shop the way you can buy resources. So relying on core competences might be safer in the long run than relying on unique resources, which then may turn out not to be so unique. Now, following on from this, uh, there are then two uh, approaches to the strategy. First of all, there is position-based. And, and what th this is really saying is you look at what the environment is doing, you look at what your competitors are doing, and you change. No company is big enough to, to stand up against the, the movement of the tide, if you like, of, of change. You have to be humble. You have to change and fit in with the environment and the competition and what your customers want. And this is very much what Kodak tried to do. People didn't want film. People wanted digital cameras. So Kodak was humble enough to say, well, we'll try making digital cameras. It changed its position. It's changed its product. However, that might not be absolutely the right way to go. Obviously, you can't ignore what's happening in the market and what's happening in technology. But if you abandon your uh, current position, there's no guarantee that you're going to be good at any other product or service. And in the 1990s, a couple of writers, uh, Prahala and Hamel, came out with an alternative idea to position-based, and they call it resource-based strategy. What it says is, over the years, you have become really good at certain things. A combination of resources and competences have you made you better than anybody else. If you abandon those and change your position and start making something else, really you're starting from scratch again and having to build up a whole new set of resources and competences. And there's no guarantee that you will be successful in that. What uh, Prahalad and Hamel uh, said was, hang on a moment, don't abandon these resources and competences which have served you so well in the past, which nobody else has, nobody else can really compete with. Hang on to those and see if you can reuse them in a different way. So repurpose them, if you like. Uh, and that should give you really a head start. You are still using these valuable, unique resources and competences that made you profitable in the past, we'll simply use them in a different way to make us highly successful in the future. So we shouldn't be a too um, a passive here. We shouldn't just give up when we see maybe things changing. We should say, right, things are changing. How can I adapt while staying in my core competences, but how can I use those, repurpose those in a different way? So the uh, idea is that we need to be a bit creative about the future, future products, future services. Now, a good example or a, or a good um, kind of um, depiction of this is, is like, like a tree, the business is a tree, and you have it anchored, its roots, if you like, are in its core competences, and it uses those in a number of different divisions or branches and a number of different products. And a good example is uh, Canon. You may know Canon as a Japanese camera manufacturer. And Canon has identified what its core competences are, and one of them is obviously optics. Very good at lenses. And the second one, which isn't quite so obvious, is very good 
at very small, accurate motors, electric motors. Because when you uh, focus on an item with your camera, the lens has to move a tiny little bit, depending on what you're focusing, fractions of a millimeter, very, very quickly, very, very accurately. Uh, and if you're going to make good cameras, you have to be good at the, the little accurate motors which, which, which are capable of doing that. So, it will have more core confidences, but let's just concentrate on these two. So, Canon says, what can I make uh, which uses these core competences, which are going to give me the edge over other people. And uh, one of the things obviously it makes is cameras. Uses the optics, uses the, the, the motors on the, uh, the focusing. Then it said, how else could I use those? What else uses opticals and motors and things? And it got into copiers, photocopiers. You need a lens, you need all the zoom and so on. Uh, you are feeding paper through, you're moving the zoom lens and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, making use of their competencies, but in a tiny different sector. The first one was consumer, this one is offers. Another place they began looking is microscopes. Plus medical. Other medical equipment. So microscopes making particular use, of course, of very high quality optics. Some medical equipment, endoscopes, which they can pass down your throat, need good optics, uh, often a little kind of uh, tweezers on the end which need to be activated and so on. Uh, but again, Canon uh, has got the competences to do that. And of course it makes printers. Inkjet printers. Inkjet printers, maybe combined with a copier, a fax machine and so on, uh, you need to be able to scan the copy you need optics, you need the motor going along. When the printer is printing, it's terribly accurate and the, the way the print head moves and, and so on there. So again, Canon is in many different uh, business areas, different sectors, consumer, medical, offers and so on. But it's making use in a different way in each of those sectors of its core competences.